But every year, the two main political bodies of China meet for its annual gathering, known as Two Sessions. It's where the top plans to implement China's policies are revealed. And we have breaking news from the conference hall this week. And China has just announced its plan to restructure and streamline its Ministry of Science and Technology on an unprecedented scale. Why and how? Let's check it out. I'm going to summarize the reform plan in three major points. Number one, the institutional changes will reduce the scope of the Ministry of Science and Technology. Some functions and subordinate agency will be transferred to other ministries and commissions which are mission oriented. For example, SciTech policies regarding agricultural issues will be given to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs. Environmental tech issues will be taken care of by the Ministry of Ecology and Environment. Likewise, the National Development and Reform Commission, the National Health Commission, and the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology will each claim their new responsibilities in promoting innovation in science and technology in their respective departments. After all, each organization is in the best position to know and understand the tech problems surrounding their industry. Number two, the reorganized ministry will no longer be involved in the evaluation and management of specific scientific research projects. As a policy-making department, the ministry has long been debated for its involvement in the allocation and use of research found. If you manage those projects on one hand and evaluate them on the other, it's a bit like the athlete acting like a referee. Under the restructuring, the ministry will take a break from day-to-day -day management and focus on advising strategy. But the ministry will still manage one major found, the National Natural Science Foundation. The foundation will focus on the basic science research and the management of major national science and technology projects, since this requires pooled resources and unified leadership to advance. Then comes the third change of this plan, the establishment of a Central Science and Technology Commission, which will become China's top decision-making body in this field. The ministry will become the executive body of this commission. The name commission carries with it some weight. Since 1998, top decision-making body underwent name changes before becoming the Central Science and Technology Commission. Experts say this commission can strengthen the CPC Central Committee's leadership over science and technology innovation and enhance its capabilities. Behind the context of these changes is the fact that China has gone from being a follower to a leading force in many areas. Many frontier research activities have stepped into the unknown territories, asking Chinese science policymakers to be extremely focused. It may seem that the responsibility of the Ministry of Science and Technology have been reduced, but the truth is, the role of science and technology in China's future have been raised to an even bigger and more prominent level. I'm Yang Zhao, and see you next time.